Hello, and welcome to another episode of 5 Minutes of Development. We are currently still working on Cast Conflict, reaching the finishing stages. What I'm going to demonstrate today is how we are building the map. So in the game right now, we have had the code for the map for some time, but everything that's been in it so far, position-wise, has been placeholder values. So what I'm going to be working on tonight is actually getting what's in the map and making it final. So you can see here we have these temporary values. I've got an algorithm creating these crappy straight lines for paths from castle to castle. What we want to do is create something that looks a little bit better. Something that actually uses the map instead of having castles in the middle of lakes. And what I've done for this so far is I've actually gone and placed all the maps on this PNG image. Now the unfortunate part is there's no way to convert a PNG to, you know, to a actual game file, unless I were to make just this the game file and somehow detect these rectangles. So what I'm going to be working on is getting these positions into the game. Now there's actually a little trick I'm using that makes this pretty easy, and that is getting this corner in the lower left corner, this corner roughly in the center of the castle, and it'll give me the coordinates in OpenGL. So 141, 161 for that one. Okay. 141, 461. All right, so what we have in here, I was originally going to go with an XML approach, but for the first release, this is actually being done with um, just regular code. So instead of having an XML file with all these different variables, I'm just basically hard coding it myself into the game. And really, this is actually more efficient. There's really no reason not to do this, other than the fact that I just really love data-driven approaches. I love to work with XML. But instead, we have code that basically mimics XML. I'm just creating objects and adding them to a list. And all these names are temporary. What I've chosen for the name so far are the name of Roman ports. And that was just because there's a list of them, so I don't have to think too hard about it. I'm probably going to change them into something that sounds like person's names. And so these are also all temporary. And these are also actually in the process of being tweaked at the same time. So for our second level, well, let's look back at our first level. Uh, campaign mode is basically built on building what the player gets used to playing the games. So they start off with just a woodcutter, the weak soldier, and the strong soldier, known as the foot soldier and the knight in game. Uh, they move on and then suddenly the attack dog is introduced. And it's going to go through a concept like that. And I have my notebook mapped out how I want to uh, progress the player through the game. And we have a total of 21 castles they fight. Uh, we believe this will be a lot of fun for the player, and the hardest part for us is not going to be adding more castles or more units. We have ideas for way more units than we have in the game, and we'd love to add them, but of course, if we keep on adding all the units we think of, the game will never get live, so those are going to be intended as updates. And we can easily add castles as you can see. It's pretty much copy and paste magic. Copy this, paste it, change these values in the pasted one, I've got a new level. So the difficult part is actually going to be uh, fitting everything on the map and getting these positions. So I'm just going to get all of these castles in. You can see this is basically organized in three loops. We have this loop here, these are the starting castles. Uh, this loop here, these are the intermediate castles. Then this loop here, the end castles. And the goal is for the player to have some choices. So they start here, progress around, and they get to either this castle or this castle, and they can move to the next loop. They get to this castle, and they move to the final loop. So if the player thinks they're really, really smart, can beat the computer, they can actually try and attack this castle while they're weaker, even though this castle will actually be more powerful than any of these other castles. It's basically the seventh castle in the game, and they can go straight from two to seven. So it's just a way of giving the player a little bit more options, a little bit more they can do. Um, so, yeah. Our goal is to get these in. I'm going to get the first loop in, and then I'm going to show you how to get these dots in, which are a very painful process. So I'm not going to actually do all of them on camera. So we have our first castle, second castle. Ooh, that's interesting. 144, 336. 
pretty mind-numbing work here. 251, 524. So if we compare this with our map, maybe zoom out so it's a little bit better. How does it compare? Other than the fact that the castles don't all face the same direction, which is intended, it looks pretty good. That worked pretty well. Now you can obviously see here we have these nice red lines appearing in ways that make sense. Here they're all appearing in straight lines. And again, I just algorithmically generated them. There's no real magic going on here. The way these connections are established happens down here. And again, this is more data that could be XML being loaded through code. And the unfortunate part is it's actually a fair amount of code to connect to Castle. Uh, well, this is a real example. This is all the code for the temporary lines. So to connect our first castle to our second castle, we just create a map connection. A map connection contains the ID for the first castle, an ID to the second castle, and the points. And these points represent each of these dots on the map. So we have six leading from the first castle to the second castle. I'm just going to add two more, and then adjust those coordinates. And again, just sticking this in the top right corner, or roughly in the middle. So 53, 532. And again, this is the mind numbing part. Eighty nine four forty. Now, if we run, there we go. That's pretty good. All right, that's the end to today's episode of Five Minutes of Development. Thanks for watching.